Geckos are small, mostly carnivorous lizards that have a wide distribution found on every continent except Antarctica. Geckos are found in warm climates throughout the world. They range from 2 to 60 centimetres. They are the most species-rich group of lizards with about 1,500 different species worldwide. The common house gecko Hemidactylus frenatus is a gecko native to South and Southeast Asia as well as near Oceania. It is also known as the Asian house gecko, Pacific house gecko, wall gecko, house lizard, tiktiki, chipkali or moon lizard. They grow to a length of between 7 to 15 centimeters and live for about 7 years. These small geckos are non-venomous and not harmful to humans. Most medium-sized to large geckos are docile, but may bite if distressed. You can also find the Tokei gecko, gecko gecko, in houses. Tokei geckos, native to Southeast Asia, is the largest species attaining a length of 25 to 35 centimeters. Its call or chirp rather resembles the sound gecko gecko, also interpreted as chak chak chak. In Asia, notably Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore and Malaysia, geckos have local names derived from the sounds they make. The house gecko is called twekai, chechak or chichak. Geckos are unique among lizards for their vocalizations, which differ from species to species. Most geckos in the family Gekkonidae use chirping or clicking sounds in their social interactions. Tokai geckos, gecko gecko, are known for their loud mating calls and some other species are capable of making hissing noises when alarmed or threatened. Like most lizards, geckos can lose their tails in defense, a process called autotomy. The predator may attack the tail that can move and wriggle for minutes, allowing the gecko to escape. They found the gecko tail had zigzag lines that separated segments of the tail, forming a pre-cut line. When the geckos shed their tail, they left behind a pointy crown-shaped stump. At the stump, the team was able to see bizarre mushroom-shaped structures. The tail grows back quickly but it looks often different from the original tail. A gecko's tail is an extension of its spine. Regenerated tails, however, are simpler affairs. It's just a bunch of concentric tubes of fat, muscle and skin. Geckos are known for being expert climbers, able to stick to any surface thanks to tiny hair-like structures on the bottoms of their feet. Researchers took a closer look at those structures, revealing that they are coated with an ultra-thin layer of lipid molecules in an upright orientation. Those tiny microscopic hairs are called setae, each of which splits off into hundreds of even smaller bristles called spatulae. It has long been known that at microscopic size scales, the so-called van der Waals forces become significant the gecko's foot's grip on the wall thus takes place on an atomic scale. The following video explains the van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces are forces of attraction between molecules that are very close together. These forces between molecules are much weaker than the chemical bonds between the atoms holding a molecule together. Let's see how van der Waals forces work. Molecules are electrically neutral because they have equal numbers of positively charged protons in the nucleus 
and negatively charged electrons outside the nucleus. In addition, some molecules are also polar. What does this mean? Well, polar molecules have permanent poles of electrical charge like a magnet because the electrons are unevenly distributed around the molecule. How does this happen? Let's look at an example of a polar molecule, water. A water molecule, or H2O, consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. When a water molecule forms, both hydrogen atoms bond with the oxygen atom by sharing their electrons with the oxygen atom. This completes both oxygen's outer electron shell, which can hold all eight electrons, and hydrogen's outer shell, which can hold two. However, the electrons aren't shared equally between the atoms because the oxygen atom attracts the electrons more strongly than hydrogen. As a result, a partial negative charge develops around oxygen because there are more negatively charged electrons around the oxygen side of the molecule. In comparison, fewer electrons around the hydrogen atoms create a partial positive charge on the hydrogen side of the molecule. This unequal sharing of electrons creates opposing poles of electrical charge on either side of the two bonds that hold the atoms together. Because of the opposite poles, these bonds are called polar covalent bonds. And since a water molecule is angled or bent with both of the hydrogen atoms on one side and the oxygen atoms on the other side, the molecule as a whole also has opposite poles and therefore is referred to as a polar molecule. Now, when polar molecules are near each other, a van der Waals force of attraction between the molecules occurs because of their oppositely charged poles. In this example, the attraction of a polar molecule's negative pole to the positive pole around hydrogen atoms in water is a particularly strong type of van der Waals force called a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds only occur in polar molecules between hydrogen in one molecule and oxygen, nitrogen and fluorine in the other. If a molecule doesn't have permanent poles of opposite electrical charge, it's called a nonpolar molecule. However, nonpolar molecules can become polar for very brief moments since the locations of electrons around atoms are constantly changing. This means the molecule can have a temporary negative pole on the side where there are momentarily more electrons and a temporary positive pole on the opposite side where there are fewer electrons. The momentary concentration of electrons in this molecule's negative pole can repel the electrons in a nearby molecule toward its opposite end making the neighboring molecule polar as well. The oppositely charged poles of adjacent molecules attract each other, forming weak connections between them called van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces explains two important properties. Cohesion, the attraction between like molecules within a substance, and adhesion, the attraction between unlike molecules in different substances. An example of cohesion is when opposite poles of water molecules are attracted to each other but not to the surrounding air. This creates an inward force, allowing water to bead up and form water droplets. Adhesion, the force of attraction between unlike molecules, explains how geckos are able to climb on slick, flat surfaces. Although each molecular connection is very weak, Geckos can form millions of them between the molecules within the microscopic hairs on each foot and the molecules in the climbing surface. These connections add up to more than enough adhesion force to support the gecko's weight. A new study shows that soaked surfaces and wet feet cause geckos to lose their grip. Sometimes they do fall from the wall or the ceiling. All geckos 
except species in the family Eublepharidae lack eyelids. Instead, the outer surface of the eyeball has a transparent membrane. They have a fixed lens that enlarges in darkness to let in more light. The sensitivity of the gecko eye has been calculated to be 350 times higher than human cone vision at the color vision threshold. The optics and the large cones of the gecko are important reasons why they can use color vision at low light intensities. One advantage to slit light -like pupils is that they allow the iris to contract and expand more dramatically. This is a useful trait for nocturnal species whose eyes are designed for low light levels. It also protects their eyes from the bright light of day. Ever see a gecko lick its eyes? Well, these animals don't have eyelids, so they have to keep the skin of the eyes moist by licking them. If they don't lick, then they can't see, because the skin of the eye would become like a dried up and dirty window. Geckos have been a source of fascination and mystery since ancient times. These small reptiles, which are found worldwide, have inspired a range of myths, legends, and superstitions throughout history. They are often seen as symbols of good luck and protection across many different cultures. In ancient Egypt, geckos were revered for their association with regeneration and protection. The Egyptians believed that geckos possessed the power to ward off evil spirits and bring good fortune to those who encountered them. The gecko's ability to shed its tail and regrow it was seen as a symbol of rebirth and renewal. Reflecting the Egyptians' fascination with the cycle of life and death, in most Asian countries, including Thailand, people allow geckos to live in their houses as they believe it confers good luck. There's also a popular myth that geckos could carry the soul of somebody who had died or was about to die. In Thailand, they believe that if you hear a gecko before you leave your home, it is a sign that you will experience bad incident. The lizard is warning you that something bad will happen to you, so you should stay inside. The Chinese believe that when the small reptiles are present in their homes, they bring forth spiritual protection and good luck. The Japanese sought inspiration from their agility and believed that this creature was a symbol of truth and speed. Asian cultures and traditions strongly support and appreciate the presence of these creatures. In Hinduism, geckos are considered symbols of wisdom and prosperity. They believe that if you have a gecko in your house, it can prevent a family from falling into poverty. Another example is the ancient Maoris, who believe that geckos bring knowledge and teach humankind to learn from their experiences. Some people believe that when the lizard falls on the head, it indicates that the person will be flourished with wealth, royalty and luxurious life. If it falls on a rich person's head, it is believed that his wealth will start to destroy gradually. A lizard falling on the head's top part or crown foretells death. However, if the fall happens to be on the back of the crown, it indicates good fortune. Lizard falling on the hair signifies difficulties. Although the spiritual meaning of geckos in different cultures may differ, one thing remains the same. They are believed to bring good luck, prosperity and protection to those who see them. They are highly respected and celebrated creatures in many parts of the world. So the next time you see a wall gecko scurrying across your living room, take a moment to reflect on the spiritual symbolism it may represent. Embrace the connection between humans and nature, and may these tiny creatures continue to bring blessings and positive energy into your life.